this is Misha. In my hands is a what is commonly known as a 3040 Craig. This is actually a model 1896 Craig Jorgensen. And this is not what today's video is on. I just brought it out because this was the first smokeless powder repeating rifle that the US military adopted, specifically the Army. It is a typical turn bolt design with one locking lug. It ha has a five round magazine and it fires 30 caliber US Army commonly called 3040. But we'll revisit this weapon in a later video. This is what the US Army adopted in 1892 and it went into production in uh, 1894 and there's actually three different ver major versions 1892, 1896, and 1898 with several smaller variants like the 1899 and the carbines. However, the U.S. Navy did not immediately adopt the Craig. Instead, they adopted this very unique and often forgotten rifle today. This is a Winchester 1895 Lee Navy. This is chambered for a very early smokeless powder, semi-rimmed, six millimeter so very small diameter projectile it was very hot very fast and up until 223 was adopted in the 60s it was the smallest standard surface cartridge as far as diameter the u.s military used it was also unique that it was measured in uh, millimeters six millimeter versus uh calling it in, in the imperial or inch system which would be uh two 236 i believe but um, this was designed by James Paris Lee. He's, he's also famous for the uh, Lee Enfield, and we have a long video on the Enfield series, so if you haven't checked that out, please do so. You can definitely see a lot of similarities. But um, in 1894, the Navy Small Arms Board wanted to select a, uh, a new standard issue small arm rifle that needed to be firing smokeless powder. So they conducted trials, and a lot of different guns were tested. Now what the Navy did, they provided barrels and 6 millimeter ammunition. And then the companies would um, fit the barrels to their receivers and do all that. Well, really the two favorite designs were this Lee and a design by Yorgi or George Luger. Well, Luger dropped out leaving this one to be declared the victor of the selected rifle in 1895. So what we have here is a 28 inch barrel. It has Metford style rifling which means it has shallow lands and grooves and the idea was it was easier for cleaning and again this was something selected by the US military not by James Paris Lee. We have Pretty typical bayonet lug. It had a really short bayonet, but I don't have one. I think it was about an 8-inch blade. We have sling swivels here, stacking swivel. Pretty typical rear sights here. Adjustable. Actually, these are very finely adjustable sights. Because, again, these are meant for shooting a high velocity, very flat shooting long range projectile. Uh, but now to the what's neat about this gun. This is a cam action. Now here's the bolt. You pull it up and back. And when you pull it back, that click was the firing pin cocking. Back forward. Now it's locked now. The only way to unlock it, aside from pulling the trigger, is to hold down the release here. And this was a safety feature. They didn't want people accidentally unlocking these, or the rifle accidentally unlocking. Now we have a magazine designed by James Paris Lee. It holds five rounds in a single stack magazine. It used a very unique clip, which while it did go into the magazine, it was not required to feed. There's actually a follower in here and you can feed this either single shot or you can use the clip. 
once you put all five rounds in, the clip will actually fall out the bottom here. So it can either be loaded single shot or with five round, I guess, in block clips. I'm not sure exactly what you call that style. Maybe man liquor style, but unlike the man liquor style, they weren't required to operate the weapon. So it's a very unique action. And these actually have pretty good triggers. Kind of an interesting feel to the trigger. I'm not going to do that a lot because there's no way to decock these and the firing pins are brittle, so I'm not going to dry fire this one a lot. We have a standard buttstock here with a trap door for a uh, typical cleaning kit of the day. Kind of a rope. I can get my fingernail under there. May not be able to. It's kind of stiff. Yeah. But yeah, these were selected in 1895. In January of 1896, Winchester received the first contract for 10,000 rifles. And it wouldn't be until 1897 that they would begin to deliver them to the Navy. The delay was caused by setting up production, a few, you know, few issues with the production line. Also, the Navy changed the specifications for the 6mm ammo sum, so they had to recalibrate the sights for the new type of ammunition they were going to be using. Um, the new loading, I should say. Anyway, by 1897, they started to be delivered. In 1898, the Marines would end up with about 1,800, and the Navy would get the balance of about 8,000. So then Marines and the Navy would both use these. These would be used in the um, Spanish-American War. They would later be used in the Philippines and the Boxer uh, Uprising. And in 1898, they would per, uh, place a second contract order for 5,000 more. And these would be serials 15,000 through 20,000, which this is a member, this is the, a, a rifle in the serial 19,000 range, so towards the end of the second contract. Between 10,000 and 15,000 serials, they would be a mass of uh, commercial sporting guns made, some with 24 inch barrels, and the military would obtain about a thousand of these through small purchase orders. For example, there was a fire in New York that destroyed a few of these rifles and they had to replace those. Sometimes you would see National Guard type militia units wanting some, so they would order them for those units. But, you know, all in all, about uh, 16,000, maybe a, a little bit less, went to the military. By 1899, these were already starting to kind of be phased out because they weren't working out great. It's an excellent rifle as far as accuracy. The 6mm round was, um, was really good at penetrating the armor of the day and was really good at shooting at long ranges, ship to ship. However, because of the Medford rifling and because it burned so hot, it um, was wearing the rifling out very fast. And this cam action, as you saw, is pretty, pretty bizarre. They were having some trouble with uh, extraction because it is basically a straight pull, not a traditional straight pull, but very close. So there was some extraction issues. There was also some issues with the gas venting back towards the shooter and just the ergonomics and the clip system and the fact that this fired an odd round. Really the only other gun that fired six millimeter Navy was a um, Colt 1895 machine gun that the Navy used, often called the potato digger. So there's only a couple of rifles, a couple of weapons that fired the round. And by that point, the Navy was wanting to standardize with the Army and uh, it eventually ended up adopting the 3040 Craig and uh, kind of phasing out the Lee Navy before World War I. Bef by World War I, very few of these were still in service. All of those were just in shipboard lockers, uh, arms lockers, and by 1920, all of them were out of service. But really, the only times they saw active combat were in the late 19th century and very, very early 20th century. That said, it is a very unique weapon with a unique action. And James Paris Lee is a very well regarded gunsmith and designer. I picked this one up off a friend, and he's had it for a long time. It's got honest wear and tear, but still in good shape. It's a member of the second pattern or, or, or B type. 
that has a few production improvements in, like they, they improve the extractor, they improve the firing pin, but still they never really overcame its, its issues. Really, it was just too radical a gun for the day, too different, and, um, you know, just, it take, that, that was also the time when guns were coming in and out of service very rapidly because of rapid advancements in technology. Anyway, I just wanted to share this with you today. The Winchester 1895 Lee Navy. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. And we will do a video on the Craig and the 1903 very soon. Thanks for tuning in.